How to create the aesthetic growth effect in After Effects. Hi, my name is Felix, I'm a burden-based hyperlapse photographer and today I will show you step-by-step -step how I created this effect. So let's jump right into After Effects. All you need for this effect is a hyperlapse or a video of a building. I've got one of the city hall in Berlin here and I've already trimmed it down to 5 seconds by time remapping it, as you can see by these two keyframes here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to remove the building in whole to have a clean background. Now I will duplicate my layer, rename it to background and hide the layer below. Now go to your pen tool and start creating a mask around the building. Also make sure this flag is included. Just try to stay as close to the building as possible, but you don't have to be to precise here. So now everything is selected. I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard and invert it to make sure only the sky is visible. And I will also check if at the end of my animation, at about one second, there is some part of the building visible. It's not, so that's good. So I don't have to adjust the mask here. Now go back to the start of your layer, go to Content Aware Fill, select Edge Blend as Fill Method and Range to Work Area. That's why I limited the Work Area here, so we don't have to create too many frames. Next, click Generate Fill Layer and wait for After Effects to do its magic. As you can see, we've now created a new background. You can still see some blur here in the foreground, but it's not a big deal because we will blend in the hyperlapse again. Um, it's just important to have a clean overlap here in the edges of your mask. So the next step is to duplicate the hyperlapse layer, move it all the way to the top, make it visible again. And now I want to mask out the main part of the building, which will be visible the whole time, which is this area over here, go to the pen tool again and start drawing a mask around this area. I'm gonna start on the left here and this time I will be a little bit more precise because this way the effect will look a lot better. Just follow the lines of the building over here. Make sure everything is selected all the way to the right. Zoom out again and and make sure the mask is closed. I'm gonna check if the mask is looking good here on the side, readjust a little bit if needed. Now zoom out. Because the building is moving, we also need to move the mask. There's an easy step to do so. In After Effects, just go to your mask by hitting M, select the stopwatch over here at Mask Pass, and then go to Tracker, make sure position, scale, rotation, skew is selected, and then hit track selected mask forward. Now wait for After Effects to analyze your image, and this might take a couple of seconds or minutes depending on your system. As soon as After Effects has finished analyzing this clip, I'm just gonna do a quick check and see if the mask is looking good. And as you can see on the right side, there's still some part of the tower looking through. So I'm just gonna manually adjust the mask as soon as this part is visible and which is right at the front. So maybe I didn't make proper masking at the beginning, but I'm just gonna do many adjustments here. Adjust and skip through frame by frame. I'm just gonna fast forward this for you so you don't have to watch me masking for minutes. Now I've finished adjusting the mask and as you can see, it looks pretty good. You don't have to be too precise here because if you're gonna upload it to Instagram, you don't have to be perfect to the pixel because nobody will notice and it's a quite fast animation and people won't notice if the mask is perfect or not. And now there's one last thing to do. Hit F on your keyboard with the layer selected and add a mask feather of like five to make um, the blending and the corners a little bit smoother. And now we will do the same for the different layers of the tower, duplicate my main layer again, move it all the way to the top, make it visible. This time I want to mask this area over here, so the first part of the tower. As before, go to the pen tool, start masking at the outer edges of whatever you're masking. I'm just gonna follow the different patterns over here for a clean look all the way through. And now it's really important you don't have to be as precise on the bottom part because this layer will be in the background later on and the foreground will hide it. So it can be really rough here. Close the mask and now as before, hit M on your keyboard, hit the stopwatch and use the mask tracker. Or if it's not working, you can also 
go through frame by frame and manually adjust the mask. I'm gonna try the tracker here first, hit analyze and wait for After Effects to do its work. As you can see this time After Effects didn't do such a good job, especially on the right side here. This means either adjusting the mask and tracking again or going frame by frame and adjusting the different points of the mask here. Because I've already done this, I have prepared this for you so you don't have to watch me masking for hours. Let's jump to that composition. As you can see, I have five different layers with the different levels of the tower over here and the foreground and the background. The first thing I want to do is I want to move the foreground layer all the way to the top. Those over in the foreground obviously make all of my layers here visible again. Same here, put the top layer all the way to the bottom. Keep on doing so until the first layer, which is the bottom layer of the tower, will be right behind the foreground layer. This way, each of those layers, when adjusted in position, will hide the one below. Reset this. Now it's time to animate the grow effect. To do so, let's zoom in on the timeline here a little bit. As I've said before, I want this animation to last about a second or so. So I'm going to, let's say over here, select all of the layers, hit P to bring up the position keyframes, hit the stopwatch. This way we freeze the end position of those different layers. Now go back to the start of the clip, just position of each of the layers so they will be right behind the foreground layer. Move them all the way down. As you can see, they will disappear right behind the main part of the building. Don't forget the flag on top. Now, when you rewatch it, you will see they will pop up one after another. Already looking pretty good, but there's still room for improvement. The first thing I want to do is I want to easy ease all those keyframes. So select them and go to keyframe assistant, easy ease. Just gonna do a slow walk through here. And as you can see, the flag tower is already on top. I don't really like that. So just gonna select the layer, including the flag tower and move the position keyframe a little bit to the back. So it will be just visible right at the end. I will do the same with the layers above. Just move the keyframes to the front a bit. They will pop up one after another. Look through again and as you can see at the beginning there's already this layer number three coming up here. I also want this to appear a little bit later on. Same for layer four and now it should be all fine. We have the first two layers popping up and then at some point the ones behind. Rewatch it one more time looking pretty good now. There's really a lot of creative freedom here. This means your keyframing and timeline might look different because of the building you've shot, the layers you have selected. So you have to see this video as a guide and adapt to whatever you've shot and how many layers you have created. Now let's finish up this animation. First thing I want to do is I want to add some motion blur. I go over to effects and presets and look for directional blur. Apply it to the first layer. Make sure the direction is to zero degrees because we are moving upwards. Go to the part where, the, where you can see the building move, like right about here, the most in the middle between those two keyframes. Add a keyframe for blur length. Select the value, let's say I'm gonna go with 20 over here. As you can see now, the building looks all blurred as it's naturally moving. Go all the way back to the start of the layer, hit zero for blur length to make sure there's no blur. The same for the end of the clip. You can see now it's not blurry anymore. If you go through your timeline, you will see there's some slight motion blur, which will make this effect look a lot better. Also for this effect, I will add easy ease keyframes, open up the effect, select all of the keyframes, right click, keyframe, easy ease for a smoother look. Now copy and paste of the keyframes, command C if you're on Mac, select all of the other layers, paste them. Now you want to open up the keyframes of the blurred length for each of the layers and match them with the position keyframes. So when the position keyframe starts, you want to have the blurred length keyframe starting as well. Same for the end. Just gonna do it for all of the layers. If you look through the animation, you can see there's some slight motion blur for all of the layers when they pop up, which will give an overall smoother look. Let's watch it in whole. It's looking pretty nice. The next step is to create a full loop of this. I need to trim all of the layers which are part of the animation to only last one second. So select all layers of the tower and trim them to one second. This way you can make sure they are not visible anymore as soon as the animation ends and you can go back to the normal hyperlapse, trim the foreground layer, the background and sky layer as well. Zoom in here a bit, make sure they are really trimmed up at one second. And now, as you can see, as soon as the animation ends, we go back to our main hyperlapse layer, the video continues. So as you can see, there's a clean 
overlap here. Now to create the for loop, I go to my time remapping keyframes. And as you see, I've already created one for the five second remapping. Stretch my layer to 10 seconds, copy and paste the first keyframe to the end. As I've already added a zoom in here, I will also need to adjust the position of the tower. So go to the middle of the clip, adjust the position so it's visible, go all the way to the end and copy and paste the keyframes from the beginning. Now, as we have a full loop of our clip, there's one last thing you can do, which is to add some motion blur to the foreground. To do so, right click here in your layer panel and create a new adjustment layer, which will be on top of everything. Go to effects and Add directional blur again. This time you need to mask the foreground of the image. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle, adjust the mask pass to only cover the sidewalk in front of the building. As before, hit M, hit the stopwatch, go to let's say one second first, readjust the position of your mask to only cover the sidewalk, go to two seconds, and as you can see, the sidewalk is not visible anymore, so make sure the mask will be out of the frame. Now you have to do the same for the end of the clip. So as soon as the sidewalk comes in again, create another keyframe, adjust the mask pass, go over here a bit. When the sidewalk is not visible anymore, adjust again and all the way to the back. Now go to the beginning of the clip again and set keyframes for the direction and blur lengths of the direction blur. Now you can adjust the direction to match the movement of the frame and adjust the blur lengths. You can see some motion blur. I'm gonna go with like 10 here. I think we need to adjust the direction here a bit. In the last frames, when you can see the sidewalk, gonna move it up here a bit to match the movement. And as you can see now, you have some Nice looking motion blur in the foreground. Hit F on your keyboard and add a mask feather of like 50 for a cleaner look. Also make sure the effect keyframes for the blur will be at the end of the clip when the sidewalk is visible again. Make them visible, copy and paste the first ones to the last frame, copy and paste the second one for the direction at about the same way it is in the beginning. Now you can also add some color grading and sound effects and in the end the whole animation will look like this. This was how to create the building grow effect in After Effects. You can also use different software like DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro as they offer the same tools. Just use this video as a guide and follow along to create this effect in your software. I hope this video inspires you and you might try this effect. If you upload it somewhere, make sure to tag me on Instagram, TikTok or wherever so I can see it. Make sure to comment if you want to see effects like this in future videos. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss them. Thanks for watching and see you next one. Bye bye.